Press Play. He's the voice of the intersection of marketing, tech, and popular culture. Thinking is his commodity. DJ, data punk, stylish sock collector, and author of the book Disruptive Marketing. Jeffrey Cologne is your host of Disruptive FM, the marketing podcast for eccentric minds. And if it's Friday, it means it's another episode of Disruptive FM. The Marketing Podcast for Eccentric Minds. I'm your host, Jeffrey Cologne, broadcasting from the campus of Microsoft. Hope you had a good week. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about what marketers can learn from the gig economy. Um, How podcasting is actually the best form of native advertising. And some more quotes from our uh, book on uh, inspiration for innovation, right here for those watching the video, and uh, all that and more. So glad to be back for another week. I'm Jeffrey Colon, your host. You can reach out to us on Twitter at Disruptive FM. Of course, you can follow along with the conversation or actually be part of the conversation using the hashtag Disruptive FM on Twitter or wherever hashtags are supported. It's always interesting to talk to people about where hashtags are supported because they're supported on a, on, on a multiple of platforms, yet Twitter has owned that for a long period of time. It's actually supported on Facebook, it's supported on Instagram. It's an old way of archiving on the web. But uh, shows once again that once a company can own something, they uh, you know, they can they can they can run with that. So the gig economy, it's here. It's not going away. That's probably one of the reasons that all of us should have a side hustle. I think my side hustle right now is recording these podcasts that maybe ten people listen to. But. Uh, Hey, if it allows you to figure out where things are moving and, and how to get stronger in some areas, then it, uh, I think it's beneficial uh, to be doing those things. I think in this day and age of marketing, if you're not doing, um, if you're not taking advantage of learning and doing, then you're going to be left up, uh, you know what's creek. So uh, we should all be doing things. We should all be hustling. And one of the things I think marketers are really going to learn from the, from the gig economy is that their customer base is no longer going to be able to be identified through one job title or one position. So for organizations in the enterprise or B2B space, this is going to be quite interesting to watch unfold. Because in the past, you might say, hey, let's go after someone who works in uh, you know, social media or who's the director of marketing or who uh, is a creative director. Well, those jobs are sort of going away. They're becoming more freelance oriented. Uh, so it might be more difficult to find or connect with those people um, based on their job title alone because they're con- they may have three or four different gigs at a, at a given time. Um, I just think that the day and age of, uh, you know, the one gig economy for life obviously is, is long in the uh, rear view mirror. So one thing marketers can, can, can learn from this is, you know, how do they actually find that audience now? Are they going to be able to find them by job title necessarily, or do they really need to target based off interest? This is where I think the interest graph could actually be the most powerful in terms of audience targeting moving forward. We have a tendency of looking at uh, the social graph. We have a tendency of looking at the economic graph. But I think the interest graph might be the one that is is unique to us in combination with some other data factors, meaning if we know a person works in marketing and we also know that they like music, what's the content or communication that you're going to have with that person in order to figure out if they're interested in your service or philosophy or product. Um, Very interesting now that we are not going to to be targeted or or be able to be targeted uh, based on on job titles alone or jobs alone. I mean, people actually are switching industries constantly 
Um, and I think that's going to be very interesting because we've talked for a really long period of time about the, you know, the era of mobile. And now we have to think about the era of not just mobile as a device, but the era of mobile as, uh, you know, with us as people, so to speak. I mean, we're constantly going to be moving around physically, virtually, from job to job, from geographic location to geographic location. And I say this because there are three people now that I just uh, found out who used to live in Brooklyn that are now out here in Seattle. So I must have started a trend a couple of years ago when I realized that, hey, I think I need to make a life change and a career change and see what's going on out there in the Pacific Northwest and sort of this entrepreneurial environment. Not to say that New York doesn't have that entrepreneurial environment, it does. Uh, but Tech Alley wasn't what it was uh, in this day and age in 2016. Uh, back in even three years ago in 2013, there were only a handful of companies that had actually uh, broken through in terms of um, major funding. Some that actually had been uh, had undergone IPOs, others that had been acquired. The majority were still uh, really under the radar. So I think uh, if someone had to ask me the question, am I going to be here in Seattle forever? I can't answer that question. I don't think any of us can answer any of these questions. And that's, that's what's going to make it difficult for marketers and what they can learn when it comes to the gig economy. We are not going to have static careers. We're going to be very dynamic and people are going to come in and out of fields all the time. So what that means, let's say you're marketing a product right now where you feel, hey, I have my base of customers, but I need to go out and find new customers. Well, your base actually may not be your customer, uh, customers that you can rely on in the long run if many of those people actually drop out of the field that they're in to go work in other fields. And that that's what the gig economy is going to cause, a cataclysmic shift in terms of uh, we are going to have to be in a perpetual state of marketing. We can never really rest on our laurels. We're gonna constantly have to be talking to people. So it'd be interesting. Your thoughts, of course, tweet to me at D-J-G-E-O-F-F-E-R. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. Jeffrey with a G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y. Last name Cologne, C-O-L-O-N. The British phonetic spelling with the uh, Spanish surname. All right, so I've been talking a lot about native advertising for a while with some of the some of my uh, um, co-workers and people in the industry, and we're always talking about native from a visual standpoint. You go to a website, uh, there's a piece of content there that looks like it. Uh, uh, f a form of content, but it's actually a, a engaging ad, so to speak. Uh, Facebook, their promoted posts are really um, neo display advertising, if we wanted to give it a term. You're in your news feed, you're looking at content from your friends and family, and you realize, wait a minute, this is a promoted or a sponsored post. Uh, the same thing with Twitter, the same thing with all of these platforms. And of course, the original native advertising was search. You'd go search for something in the, uh, the uh, search engine results page, the, the top uh, outcomes of your search were advertising. But now things are shifting. People know and can see those things. They see the promoted uh, posts, the sponsored posts, they can see that something is an ad. And also many of those posts are still dealing mainly with uh, text or photography. Of course, Facebook's really trying to get into video now and moving more into that uh, area. But how do we actually really get beyond that interruptive feeling from those forms of native advertising. I think one of the ways we get beyond it is we actually move into to entire new forms of content that we have not even thought of before 
as native advertising. And one of them is what we're doing here, what I'm doing on camera, what I'm doing on microphone, and that's podcasting. I think podcasting is the premier form of native advertising now. You've been listening to an episode of Disruptive FM, the marketing podcast for eccentric minds. Remember to subscribe to the show on iTunes. Purchase a copy of Jeffrey's latest book, Disruptive Marketing, on Kindle, hardcover and audio. Signing off from the city of Seattle. Press pause.